As I said, our guests this morning, Lynn Lovell, and LaMontagne, and Deborah Eastman. They penned a book on Milford that's now on sale and have a book signing on Sunday from 2 to 4, and that's at Memorial Hall. Um, I guess, ladies, what I have to do is just say, wow. This book is really something. Um, I want to go through the process for developing it. It must have been a lot of work. But let's talk about how it came about. Was it fun to do? It was loads of fun. We had each other to laugh with, and we played, and, and we really worked hard for about 14, 15 months to put it together. And um, But it was a great... We had a lot of fun doing it with each other. So I know it's it's a cliche, but labor of love, ladies? Yes, definitely <laughs> I would say that. And I would like to say it was Deborah Eastman's idea to do the oh. book. She's a librarian, and oftentimes people came in to take the Milford book out, and of course it was not published yet. Did you guys learn stuff doing this? Oh, yes. I we certainly found- did. You did. Because I'm not a native Milfordian. Uh, only being here 20 years at the library, and I learned a lot from my my co-authors Lynn and Ian, and I'm very grateful for that. Why is it a wow book? Milford has a very rich history, <clears throat> which we, uh, those of us that do history, have come to appreciate. There's a lot of different facets to Milford, so it's a fascinating town to live in, fascinating town to talk about. It goes through everything from the the old downtown, the music, the the sports, the businesses, the shoe shops, the hat shops. Tell me all about that. And I, I guess what makes the book, would you agree, is the photos. Definitely, it is the photographic, and it's because the train came to Milford and it advanced Milford far beyond the mm. neighboring towns of Hopedale, Medway, and Hockington, and so that's why the shoe shops and the granite industry. It came, and it was a center for shopping. Our main street was very vibrant for huh. years. <laughs> and we had a Never. lot of photographs to choose from, and we were fortunate because the Historical Commission has such a rich mm-hmm. variety in its collection. The library's collection has been growing over the past two decades, and then we are um, grateful to the local collectors, uh, such as um, Mr. Paul Curran, Robin Philbin, uh, Pat Fahey, and a number of other private individuals that gave of their uh, personal photographs and lent them very willingly to our project. Obviously, there were a lot of pictures you didn't use. Was it a difficult process to oh, sift? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I think we could do two or three more books, actually. <laughs> Arcadia Limitude, so yes, we had to choose which were the best. And we didn't fight too much. We had ah. <laughs> a, a few we just really <coughs> pleaded of. We said, oh, no, I feel so strongly about this one. That's, That's a good point. Who made the final decisions? The um, three of us agreed on oh. things. We are a and there were, s- there were several, that, well, three that I can think of, that Arcadia said weren't the quality they were looking for, and they didn't think they could use them, but we thought they were very important to the book, and they did work with them, and they are in the book. Yeah. We didn't cave in. We got... <laughs> What the you want? Results that we wanted mm. for the town, for this book. Tell me about the pictures. Um, how many did you think you sifted through to get the ones that are in the book? And <laughs> and the selection, the selection process. Did you go by it, uh, music category, then go to the downtown, then go to the business, or did you do it kind of all jumbled up? <clears throat> we went through the books first and pulled out what we thought should be in the book. Then we kind of categorized them. Then the next step was to, oh, my goodness, we've got 350 (laughs) photographs, and we can only put in 220 or something Mm -hmm. like that. So we began to weed out. And then we suddenly said, oh, here's another picture we've never seen before, so we're going to use this one. So, But we came out of it friends, so it worked (laughs) out all right. (laughs) What was the best part for you guys? Being together, I ah, guess. Good point. Yeah. Uh, I think we learned from each other and had a lot of fun. Was it more work than you thought it was going to be? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. But the research, it really focused us on um, details that we wanted strongly to be correct. We had proofreaders from the commission and That's from the library too. that uh, fact-checked. Because once the book is in print, you can't yeah. take it back. 
Now, we were also fortunate to have Leela Dunbar do the mm-hmm. forward. Yes. Yep. Yes, because she she is on the Antique Road Show, and she's very knowledgeable. And the forward that she wrote is very heart-wrenching. It's a lovely story of Milford that she enjoys coming back to visit her hometown. Mm. It's very personal to her, and uh, she conveys that in her words. She's a great gal. Um, <clears throat> I was talking to Lynn before we began, but I think one of the things that makes the book very, very special is that a lot of us and people who, who buy this are going to be taken back in time and history. We remember the sidewalk fairs downtown, the, the shoe shops, the hat shops, the railroad, it, it, it's the, the Risebergs, the Harold's Menswear, the Kettle and Keg, the Rice's Farm. All that stuff, it brings you back, doesn't it? Yes, definitely. It, uh, we have wonderful memories. <laughs> yes. It, those are, Anne's the lucky one. Anne grew up in Milford. And... Um, so she remembers walking on the main street. Oh, yeah, I do, too. When it was a vibrant main like street. Like I said, you had to go to Grant's on Friday night, or you had to go to the bank on Friday night. Yes, mm-hmm. didn't I you? was telling them that. <laughs> we would wait in line for the bank to open oh, yes. at 6 o'clock. And you used to go... you had a cash check, that's the only time you were available to cash a check. And we would stand in line and talk to each other. It was a great fun. And the sidewalk sales were awesome. And they were packed downtown, weren't they? Yes. I remember going downstairs. Before there were any malls. That's right. That is why everybody shopped in Melford. All the neighboring towns came to Melford to shop. Mm. We had no malls until the um, Shoppers World was built. Right. I'm jealous of Ian's experience here. It oh, sounded it like <laughs> a happening, happening. I remember going downstairs in the Grants Building because that's where the toys were when you were mm. a kid. You know, yeah. it was just. Yeah. Uh, and then going, of course, to the to the Crystal Spa or to the soda mm. shop and. Um, Tulio Pagnini, remember? Yeah. yeah. There's a name from the past, the, huh? The, the music nook was here. Yes. Music nook. A, a, for a long, long time. Yeah, over 50 nook. years. It, uh, and everybody that took lessons went to the music nook, except correct. for Bob Varney. That's correct. <laughs> Bob yep. Varney was up over the soda shop. Um, who wrote the narratives? We all oh. shared in, in those um, You must have had to pull on your memory a lot. We did. We broke it up a little bit. Um, Anne did the granite because Anne's our granite lady. Yeah. She's our expert. Uh, she when we want something in granite, in and <clears throat> Deborah and I kind of split it up and just took each other's and mm-hmm. went at it. Give me a list of the people who helped you, because without them, without you three, of course, and without these other people, you probably couldn't have done this, right? Right. It Not without clever. Roger. And my without husband Roger. Roger did all the computer work, so he scanned all the pictures in, and he made them. They had very specific specifications uh-huh. for the book, and he sent them in a Dropbox to Arcadia. So Roger was our computer tech. He's really the fourth author on this book, okay. really. <laughs> if um, we hadn't had him, um, I don't think we would have had the quality pictures that we have. He really spent a lot of time with us. The pictures are, are stunning. And they stayed together, too, through it all. They, they, Roger and Oh, Ed. they did, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it so caused we, a lot of problems, but they made it. So we, I don't think he uh, relishes the idea of another book. <laughs> we talked about it. You did, huh? <laughs> It's um, the downtown pictures. I mean, there's just Ted's Diner, and there's all these these fascinating pictures in this book that are, for their age, high quality. Yeah, he did a, a spectacular job, I believe. I think that's one reason our book is so nice and crisp and clear, is because he put a lot of time into those pictures. All the pictures had to be before 1960. I don't know if you realize oh. that. That was a specification that Arcadia did. But we did get three in that are later. The Blizzard of 78, the birthday oh. cake for the... Um, yes, Eisen remember that Canada. downtown? With <laughs> yes, I do. And the other was Catherine Coyne's retirement party. Those three are later than 1960. They're part of the town's history. Yeah. Very important. Obviously, you guys, because you've been doing it, especially Lynn, forever, <laughs> you knew of the town's history, though. It was it's, it's ingrained in you. A lot of it, a lot of it both Anne and I are carrying around in our heads, um, oh. you, you know, and uh, so poor Deborah, she had to really hit the books and, and work hard at it. <laughs> Looks uh, like she did pretty well. <laughs> she did Which extremely well. love of mine, but I was, I was blessed to have these two <laughs> women with me on this project. And I know other towns can boast about famous people and, mm-hmm. um, 
you know, ways that uh, their influence went worldwide. But Milford is a singular in that we had uh, Alexander Scammell in the Revolutionary War. We had Boots Mazzulli. There's a wonderful picture in the book with uh, uh, Mr. Mazzulli yes. and Count Basie. Count Basie. Sumner, after the Sumner Street. And um, how many people have Nobel Prize that, winners? Not very many. Dr. Murray. <laughs> <laughs> as well as, you know, the world-famous paint. Milford Granite. Yep. It's in um, major towns yep. and cities City. all over America and some places in Europe also. Um, book signing on Sunday. Sunday Where the 19th. When? Memorial Hall. The museum's open. It's our open house. Um, love to have people come down. People that have purchased their book, feel free to come in. We'll sign them for them. And we'd love to have people come. Two to four. Two to four. Uh, October 19th. And if you haven't seen that museum, do yourself a favor and come by because it is amazing. It's a great book. You guys did a, a fantastic job. You should be very, very proud of the work you did. Thank you very much, Ed. We did it for Milford. WMRC's guests this morning, Lynn Lovell and La Montaigne and Deborah Eastman. And that book signing is Sunday afternoon, 2 to 4, at Memorial Hall. This has been Daybreak News. Ed Thompson reporting. <laughs>